I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to my Tidy Tuesday screencast, where I examine a data set that I've never seen before and record myself doing it to show how to analyze and explore data in R. So as always, I'm going to be using the newest data set from the Tidy Tuesday project, and this week it looks like it's about cetaceans. Okay, what's a cetacean? Is a cetacean's a dolphin, a whale and a dolphin? All right, this is going to be this is going to be great. Um, and we're uh, all right, so we're going to start by analyzing this data. It's from a the pudding is a really great source of uh, of data visualizations analyses. And let's see, it's from the U.S. National Marine Mammal Inventory. Okay. All right. From 1938 through 2017. I'm definitely going to be looking over time. And is every row one animal? Yes, it, I think so. Or at least every row is an animal and an acquisition. Okay. Where it currently resides, or the last location where it lived before it died. Oh, this is cool. So every one of these is going to be a whale or a dolphin. And it uh, looks like it comes from this article. I'm not going to look at the article because I like to uh, I like to try and look at to view this data my um, and make my own visualizations and interpretations. So I'm going to start by this is as I always do. Go to the raw data and go into uh, R, an R markdown document. I'll save it as citations and I'll say library tidyverse read CSV the name of the file citations I'm I wonder if I'm spelling it right at all there's a missing column ah with it has the row names at the start that's okay I'm just gonna say citations raw citations processed I'm saying cetacean. I'd rather say dolphins, but I guess they're. I guess it's whales and dolphins. And I'm going to start by removing the X1 column. Any other processing, I I, I see the need to do right away. Not yet. I'm actually just going to call this cetaceans. Okay, I'm going to start by viewing the data. All right. So sex is for these is either female or male. It looks like. Uh, accuracy, what does it say accuracy is? I'll find out. Let's see. Uh, A is actual date, estimated date, unknown. Of, an, of a birthday it is. Okay. So it's birth year. Origin date is when it entered captivity. Okay. For captive born animals to be the same as the birth year. All right, origin location. Uh, so that'll be um, either like a, an ocean or uh, or a location like Sea World. Okay. Uh, it'll uh, each has sounds like a mother and a father. Uh, some of them have scientific names. Okay. There's going to be a list of transfers. Is there a way these are separated? Hmm. I don't know. Oh, this to this to this. Okay. And currently, the region of the world where it either lives or, um, or where it where it where it died, or most recently lived. All right. Current status: we have ones that are alive, died, still still birth, miscarriage, released. Okay. This is going to be interesting. I'm going to. I almost always start by counting some of these columns. So I'm going to start by counting the. Um, uh, let's let's say the. That it the uh, let's say acquisition. Most of the dolphins and whales, the cetaceans we have in this data set, are um, are were uh, were captured. A lot were born. Others are relatively. The other groups are relatively small. Okay, and um, how about status? What's the distribution of the current status? All right. Most of that, well, it's been going on since 1938, so no surprise that most of them are died. Some of them are alive, uh, and uh, others have been released. So the, the last known status is, is released. All right. Uh, of the ones that died, hmm, 
I don't know about you. I wonder how long dolphins live. I actually don't have a guess. I guess if I had to say something out of the blue, I'd say, I don't know, 10 years, um, uh, 20 years. I could be really, I could be really far off. I don't really know. I guess I'm comparing to some other animals I'm familiar with, but it could be a lot longer. Let's find out. We should have a, um, all right. So if I counted birth year and Let's see, where would the date of the one for the ones that have died, what would the date the date be? It would be be the last location where it did uh status date. Ah, the date of death or release. Okay. So if I wanted to say filter for um status equals died, then I can then I've got your birth year. And I've also got uh, we've got your, we got the birth year, select birth year. And select um, where is it? A uh, stat? What is it? Um, status date. All right. And uh, I probably need to say not is in a birth year. We need to know the birth year. Not is in a status date. All right. So now we have here's one that lived eleven years. Here's one that lived. Uh, oh, uh, correct that. Uh, 20, 24 years. 21 years. Oof. Uh, here's one that lived, what is that, 16 years. All right. So I can say um, age, and I can actually get the difference between these. A few ways I could do this. I'm just going to do the year of the status date minus the birth year. A uh, year is a function of the Lubridate package. Um, and birth year, is it not? No, oh, it's not numeric yet. Um, I'm going to do that in the processing step where I say mutate birth year is as integer birth year. It's not, it, sometimes it will be missing. All right, so we have a distribution of ages. I can now plot these as a histogram to examine the distribution. All right, this is the distribution of ages. Okay, a lot died young. And we also have a large set that died, um, this would be about 10 years. But there's really a huge stretch, a huge amount of variability here. So if this were, say, um, dogs or cats, you'd expect very few to make it past 20 years. We have a lot more variability here than that. Even though the median, let's see, summarize the median of age is about 11.5, is not far off from, say, a dog or a cat, which, again, is, they're the only animals I'm really that familiar with their typical ages. Uh, I'm not bringing that up because I expect them to be similar. Okay, do we have species here? Uh, let me see. Yeah, we do. I haven't counted it yet. Count species, sort equals true. Uh-huh, most of them are bottlenose dolphins, and... Wow, a huge uh, variety of, of species here. So this is actually probably, that would often be one of my first analyses, would be to count species. To say, had, actually I would do it a bit differently. I would use, um, we've used this a lot in our sessions, FCT lump the species, and say uh, lump the top five, and I would say, Species N chord flip and quickly throw in a mutate species equals FCP reorder species by N. Okay, so generally what we see is mostly bottlenose. This this is um is not helpful from an analysis point of view because um, to have this kind of distribution, because mostly you have bottlenose and everything else. Uh, most of the, so I can't say do some species live longer than others. I mean, I can, but it's going to be hard to really distinguish it. Um, so for example, if I, if I went to this step and I said, let's mutate species, and I'm gonna bring in the age, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna go ahead and copy these two lines that do the filtering and the calculation of age. 
I could box plot and I could try, <clears throat> excuse me, I could try saying, depending on the species, uh, here we go, depending on the species, what's the distribution of age? I'm not sure it's, it gets me very far. Um, beluga, I'm pretty sure, is a, pretty sure is a type of whale. I really don't know much about marine biology. Uh, but the... Um, we don't see. I haven't seen a huge difference in the in the medians um, or the distribution here. Uh, yeah, that that's um, that's worth uh, observing. Okay. Okay. What about the difference uh, in age between one? So I'm gonna look at the at the age distribution because uh, because it, it's uh, what seems to me to be in most interesting here. Uh, I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do is include the age in the processing step. Uh, because I, here we go. Uh, some of them will be NAs. Uh, because I, let me see. Yeah, I'm going to include the age in, 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 the, uh, in, in the processing step. But I can only include it if it's, uh, if it, Died. I can't do it for ones that are released where we don't have a death. That'll be how, how old it was when it was released. I can't do it for ones that um, uh, that are still in captivity, certainly. What I could say is if the status equals died, then it's this. Otherwise, NA. If I counted the age... There are two types of NA. That I, I, oh, I think I have a sense of why that happened. Uh, there, that's very frustrating. Uh, if else can be a little, uh, if else can be a little bit, uh, oh, oops. If else can be a little bit frustrating when it comes to types, and uh huh, it needs to be double. I'm remember, trying to remember how to do that. NA. NA is by default a type logical. How do I get it to be? All right, there it is. So to explain what I just did, uh, this will be NA of type um, double uh, because uh, if this value if this value is missing, this but NA by default is type logical. Oh, class NA is logical. And uh, I needed them to match, so I needed this particular type of NA. If underscore else from the dplyr package makes that um, explicit, which is a little bit helpful. And now I should be able to say, count age sort true. <laughs> I should. I should and yet. Hmm. Don't know why that's happening. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it now, but that's a, that's a missing data problem that's, that I'm not crazy about. A lot of people at 7 or 12 years. Okay. All right. I'm going to return to age because I'm probably going to want to say what affects the uh, typical age. But I, I want to look at some other fields first. I want to say, uh, what do, what's the gender distribution? Slight majority female, lots of male, also unknown. Uh, okay. I'm interested in where is the currently in terms of locations. Uh, isn't there a, uh, there's origin location. Actually, I'm, I'm maybe even more interested in that. What are the most common origin locations? So lots of them that were, uh, oh, and I'm going to start with also how was it acquired. Okay, so there are a lot, besides the unknowns, there are ones captured in the Gulf of Mexico, and there are ones, uh, besides the unknown, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and filter origin location is not equal to unknown. And we see Gulf of Mexico, basic Pacific Ocean are the two places that, um, that these tend to get captured, and the ones that are born in captivity tend to be either a SeaWorld location, U.S. Navy, all right, and we, and we get the, uh, the, the idea. All right. I wonder if, how this has changed over time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I actually do wonder, like, um, of these, these dolphins and whales... Uh, where have they? Where would, did they used to be acquired? Where are they acquired now? If I want to look at change over time, 
I'm going to be want. I'm gonna take want to take a look at the. Or, <coughs> excuse me, origin date, and then I mean I want to have a, 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 a histogram of the origin date. So you can actually do histograms of dates if you're just interested in the distribution. So one thing we see is we really don't have much data before 1960, even though it does theoretically go back to the 1930s. Um, that doesn't look like it. Does, like it, it looks like it just goes back to the 1940s here. We have one from 1960 onward. Most of them appeared in uh, in 1980s, 1990s. I can fill this. I can actually say fill equals acquisition. Might help get a sense. Aha! All right, but this actually this shows a clear story about the history of um, of dolphins Mo uh, and whales. Most uh, of them were captured. They were captured between 1960 and 1990. It looks like that almost completely stops. Uh, presumably, there was a law. There was a law around this. Um, uh, so at least ones that were captured weren't were discussed anymore. But from then on, it was all about ones being born in cap that were born in captivity or rescued. So we see uh, most unknown. You can also tell from the small ones. Most unknown ones are down here in the, in this area in uh, this area. Okay, and uh, let me see. You know, if I'm going to make a graph like this, I would rather have it be a spinogram. Uh, this because uh, this shows like totals. But I might, I might really prefer a distribution. So I need to remind myself how to make a spinogram, and then I'll show you what a spinogram is. Uh, I'm going to Google ggplot2 spinogram. Is it called a spinogram? Oh, they don't have their own. Eh, I don't need it to be uh, ooh, interactive ones. Nah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it myself. Okay, so a spinogram it would show as a total of the whole, uh, generally using um, uh, ribbons would be would geo ribbon would be the, the general way. What I need to do, I'm going to show what uh, what I'm referring to. Once you see the plot, you'll see um, why I think it's it's a relevant way to show this kind of graph. Is what I'm going to start is with is filter for origin date. I only want ones after 1960, and then I can count the acquisition and the decade. We've done this before where I say decade is uh, is 10 times the um, year of the origin date uh, percent, um, this is a truncated division 10. This will round it down to the nearest 10 years. And now I can make a graph where I actually can yeah, what I would do would be to, would be to say um, group by the decade and mutate the percent is n divided by the sum of n. So this shows the breakdown within each decade. Uh, so for example, in 1970, only uh, 40, only 6% of the dolphins recorded there were were born um, in captivity, as opposed to um, here 89% that were captured. So when I have a graph like this, I should have kept that old that old one. I'm gonna keep that old one. It's still a it's still a solid graph, but I might want to dis display this as um, here we go, ggplot uh, the decade, and um, let me see. It's decade y is percent fill equals acquisition and geome ribbon. Let's give this a, a shot. Oops. Oh, not ribbon. Oops. Uh, geom area. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Uh, I was close to what I was looking for. Um, notice this is. Um, you know, this one actually shows the like the distribution as uh, as time goes on. Notice these annoying gaps. Where do they come come from? They come from the fact that there were no dolphins in 1960, so this this value wasn't even here. And um, what I actually want is, after I do the count, I'm going to need to do, and we notice we've got all these steps, I need to make sure every pair occurs. That's done with the tidy R function called complete. And if I say complete acquisition and decade, then I'll get all combinations, and I say fill all the remaining values with zero. Aha, there's my spinogram. And now you can see, uh, I'm going to throw in a scale. 
y continuous labels equals percent format. Where's my uh, scales package? Now we can see this is a typical way to show changing shares of a whole over time. I'm going to clean this up a bit more. I haven't set a theme yet, and I like setting um, theme set theme light. And I like doing, uh, I like to, actually this one, eh, it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect graph, but it's pretty good. Um, I wonder if I said theme minimal, would it look any, not a perfect theme I'm wondering about. It looks a little bit better to me. I'm going to start, start with this. And if I said um, percentage of dolphins recorded, yeah, this is a pretty good graph. All right. And what this shows is that in general, we have mostly, um, mostly mostly ones that are born in captivity and the number that are um, that were uh, recorded uh, captured shrinks dramatically around 1990. If I actually change this to be every five years, if I want to change the y-axis to year, I actually like this a bit more. It shows uh, it shows how sharp the drop really was. Uh, another thing we can do is we can we can we can choose how the how this gets ordered. Uh, so I can actually right now I'm saying, uh, let me see. Yeah, I might actually want the ones that have the most area in a particular order. The green ones appearing in the middle, that's miscarriage, uh, might not really be be communicated as clearly as I would like. So I could actually add. Um, I would actually say acquisition is FCT reorder. The acquisition column by per no we don't have percent yeah, by n by the total number and sum by the total number of dolphins within that group. All right, I actually I think I like this variation a bit more. What this is doing is it's making the um it's it's putting the bigger ones on the bottom so that we can see oh there's a graph capture goes to zero replaced almost entirely by born in captivity and by rescue. We also see um the the most of the unknown data is old. Uh, most of the data we have recorded stillbirth makes sense. You need to be um, born in captivity in order to have a recorded stillbirth or miscarriage. Okay, so this is the entire story around 1990. This is the point when if I were doing an analysis, I would do an analysis of 1990 dolphin, no, well, that's the sports team, dolphin law or dolphin capture law. Dolphin, I don't think that's it. Dolphin capture law. Tuna import ban. You know, I'm having a... Oh, dry fishing of bottlenose dolphins was practiced until 1990 when the practice was... Ah, it's in Taiwan. I don't have... um, I haven't seen anything yet. U.S. Maybe it was in 1990. Maybe it was a dolphin capture law. If I remove 1990. Animal Welfare Act was 1979. Uh, okay, that would have been here. You notice the drop started after that? I could, so if I, if I did, I'd probably do a little more research if I were uh, on my own working on this, but I would probably say, uh, let's add a line, a dashed line, that's what that, that means, at, 19, at a X intercept 1979. And I'd throw something in the, um, the uh, subtitle about the Animal Welfare Act. That might be what what I'd start with. Okay, okay. What about um? But, but still, this is a good story about the, the about the history of dolphin uh, acquisition. I'm gonna drop this because I don't have quite enough meaning behind it yet, uh, and uh, and keep it as it is. All right. Next step. Let's look at acquisition location over time. So we've got acquisition location among uh. Let me see. Is it region origin location? Right. So if I if I'm reminding myself, I already did this once. Count origin location. Lots of sea worlds. Okay. I'm gonna view this a bit. Uh, I'm gonna. I want to see if there's patterns that I can follow that I can follow here. All right. 
Because what I'm saying is I notice I might want to lump the sea worlds together if I wanted to do a graph. You don't want lots of little col colors for every single um, uh, every single category. That's one category. I can also see there's Florida Keys in Florida and Marineland, Florida and Gulf of Mexico, Florida. So various regions around Florida where it's pretty common. Atlantic Ocean, Florida as well. Unknown Florida uh, and so on. Florida with a question mark. So what I'm doing here is I'm noticing what categories I might, I might see being uh, common. Another would be various kinds of oceans. Well, we have Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean. I'd probably categorize this as Florida first. And uh, let's see. Hmm. Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean. If I went to the rare ones, lots of one, of individual uh, locations within states. So it looks like Texas and Florida are two common ones. Okay. Why am I doing this? Because I'd like to make some sense of distribution by location, but there are too many locations right now. So select origin location. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and count. I'm going to keep that, uh, that count step. And I'm going to add a column called origin category. Here we go. Origin, I'm going to keep the uh, the camel case, that is the capitalization here, and say origin category. I'm going to start by creating a case when. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm coming up with a couple of patterns that I'd want to match these two. I just changed my mind. I'm not going to do this. Yeah, I just changed my mind. I'm actually not going to do this with, with a case when. I'm going to do this with the, the fuzzy join package. The fuzzy join package is a very flexible way to match uh, categories of regular expressions to, um, to, uh, observa to observations. So I'm going to show, here we go, uh, and I'd like to show how to use it. The fuzzy join, I, I'm not sure if I've used it yet in any of these, um, these screencasts. Fuzzy join is one of my packages. And it's, um, it's all about, I've got this data frame, I want to match it to another one. In this case, I want to match it to a data frame of regexes. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to create a data frame and say, triple. This is me creating a data frame where I say the two columns are the regular expression and the category. Triple is a great function for creating a new data frame. And I'm going to say, if, if it matches either Florida or FL, I want it to match. To, I want it to end up in Florida. If it matches the word Pacific, I want to say Pacific Ocean. If it matches Atlantic, I want it to be Atlantic Ocean. If it matches, uh, let's see, Sea World. This is a clear one. I want it to to, mat, to be in the category Sea World. What am I doing here with, within triple? What I'm doing is creating a data frame. Uh, but I'm typing it in a, na in a way that's natural for me with these commas, and I'm, but I'm ending up in this category. Regular expression where I can say this or this. this is a, a, um, we have a whole course, I believe, on regular expressions at Data Camp. Uh, they're, they're very useful for doing these kind of string matches. I also, let me see, I probably want Texas too. Texas or TX end up in the Texas category. All right, so what do I do with these categories? What I would do would be regex left join. What that means is take everything in here and uh, take, take every um, field in origin location. I'd say origin location will match to the regex column here. And it'll say anytime this string matches this one, it'll create a join at that point. So the first few rows don't create a join, but the Pacific, but this next one, Pacific Ocean does. These do to see all three of these do to Sea World. Look at that. And uh, then the other categories we have. I wonder if there's enough Canada for us to include it. No, mostly, let me see. 
Yeah, they're getting kind. Of, they're getting kind of all over the place. Sea World. Okay. Any other categories? I did. Um. Texas. No, this would. Sorry. Yeah, this is probably all I can really do. Except maybe Mexico might be worth separating. This would be Gulf of Mexico, Florida. Oh, this is MS. Uh, which is is that is that. Um, Mississippi, I think I think that's Mississippi though. I'm not great with states, uh, and uh, maybe Gulf of Mexico should be its own category that matches before Florida. I'm gonna show what hap what we do if they match multiple. Uh, in any case, I'm gonna say Gulf of Mexico, and we'll put that in. We'll 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 have that precede Florida in this analysis. Okay. All right, so we have a lot of the unknown ones, and, and there's also ones like U.S. Navy that don't really cat categorize with any others. And, um, okay. I, instead of doing this on the count, I'm going to do this on the original data. And I'm going to do one extra thing. I'm going to say mutate. Oh, we already have IDs. Disregard. I want to make quickly make sure these IDs are... Um, are unique. They are not. Some of them appear multiple times. I do not know what to do with, about that. So I'm going to add my own unique ID and return to those ID columns later. Why am I doing this? Because I need to remove the cases where the join matched multiple. Like, like where? That's I, I haven't found any yet. But if the, some of the Gulf of, of, of um, Mexico ones will match multiple. And what I'd say is I'd say distinct, unique ID, keep all equals true. And just like that, I've ensured we have one row for each of the original 2,194 by, by regex left join. So I'll say citations annotated. Uh, yeah. So now I can count the categories. I actually realize that there's one more thing. I want to have unknown in a, as, a, as its own category, uh, separate from other. We're going to see other in a bit. Uh, OK. All right, so most of them are unknown. If I looked at the ones that aren't unknown, it's always a good idea when I'm doing this kind of aggregation. So what I'm really doing here is I'm trying to make these this category mean, like, uh, make it possible to analyze this category. If I filter for just the unknown ones and I count the origin location, top one I think is going to be U.S. Navy. Yeah, these are ones that didn't get categorized into a larger uh, category. There, many of them are smaller um, uh, uh, water parks. Okay. Yeah, and in general, ones that, that, that are hard to, to combine into, into groups. Uh, okay, so the, um, so I'm, what I'm going to do with that is say we've got our annotated. I'm going to, actually I'm going to do that here. I'm going to say take the category and coalesce it with the original values. Um, what I'm doing there is saying take the category and uh, say if, if category is NA, then use the original origin location. And then I'm going to FCT lump the category into, your, into the top 10. What does that do? What that does is say we have unknown, SeaWorld, other. Other means you're known, but you're not in any of these categories. And then we work our way down the list to U.S. Navy Dolphin Research Center, Discovery Cove, etc. I'm going to make it not, uh, nine categories and other instead of eight, just a little bit cleaner. Okay, so why have I been doing all this? Because now I can create a similar uh, spinogram. I can say, let's see, honestly, I'm just going to copy a whole bunch of code. I'm going to say I want to count by, I'm counting by decade, really, I'm counting by every five years, uh, and then say, but instead of acquisition, I'm going to use category. Should, I should have called it acquisition category or something like that. Do I want to look only at ones? Do I want to look at ones that are captured and ones that are born separately? Probably. 
probably. I'm, I'm not going to yet. I'm going to just see what this what this graph looks like. Uh, but it, I just realized it's going to be a little bit, yeah, a little bit interesting. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so this shows, for example, most of the unknown was back before 1980. Um, that's this particular color. Other largely is ones that are born in cap that are born in captivity, so it ends up in um in these categories. So this is this is what I'm saying is like mixing together the the ones born in captivity from the ones that are um that are re that that are um, captured or rescued is a bit confusing here. So I'm gonna start with let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna keep. I'm going to keep all the categories here. All right. And then I'm going to try it for one. I'm going to say filter where the acquisition is born. I'm going to say all the ones that were born in captivity, how would they um how how do they broke break down over uh, over time? And I'm going and I'm going to do the the same time I do my, or rather right before I do my reordering, I'm going to do an FCT lump. And I'm going to lump the categories outside of the top, I don't know, let's have seven categories. What I'm looking for is just ones that are born in captivity, how do they break down? And I realize when I do that, that, that most of the ones born in captivity, as we saw in an earlier graph, were, were fairly recent. Um, so. You see, this might be a little bit, might be a little bit misleading. Maybe I want to say origin date is at least, oops, 1980. So now what I'm trying to do is do a breakdown uh, by locations of, of uh, dolphins that are born in captivity. So what I do is add a title saying, Dolphins born breakdown of dolphins born in captivity, and we have is mostly Sea World, other uh, that's that's not too exciting. Uh, the uh, anyone who was unknown tended to be the older cases. Um, U.S. Navy plenty. Uh, there's not a ton of change in these other ones. I think the biggest change I can notice is ones that fall into the Florida. No, Discovery Cove category are uh, becoming more common. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's strange to me the ones born in captivity would have the category Pacific Ocean. Um, maybe I'm maybe I'm actually missing something. Maybe there's a theme park called Pacific Fun Time or something. Uh, hmm. I'm actually going to go ahead to the capture one. And I'm not going to put a filter. I'm going to say where did dolphins tend to be captured? Well, it got a lot rarer uh, in, in, in recent history, but it looks, in general, the, the, the captures. But it looks like, of the dolphins that were captured, let's see, F it used to be very common in Florida. Of the recent ones, lots of them were Hudson Bay. Yeah, I'm just getting a little, um, uh, I'm not sure what to make out of this. Maybe the spinogram is not the way to visualize this data. Maybe I should have said, let's go back to ac to acquisition, and we'll need to do your um, we'll need to do a lumping, probably lump into fewer categories, make it more understandable, and make it a, a histogram. We're going to go back to a histogram for a moment. Say origin date. The difference here is that we can also see the totals. Oops. ST reorder. Oh. I want to reorder by the most common categories. So this is actually a little bit silly. I need to. I, uh, if I do a reorder by most common, I need to actually give it any other column or even itself and then say length. This is the summary function that gets applied. It's a little bit goofy, but I wanted the most common one on the bottom. All right. I'm not seeing a real trend here. I'm not seeing like I mean, an exception would be we have lots of them that look like it's um, like they're categorized in the Mexico group. Or is that Mexico or Gulf of Mexico? It should really be Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, I'm not really seeing a trend here, 
and a lot of it gets overwhelmed by the fact that most of the that almost all uh, captures happen between in a particular twenty five year period. Okay, we tried looking at some things around location. If we had latitudes, longitudes, we'd probably make an animation or something like that. We're not we're not doing that uh, that today. All right. I'm going to look at another question. I'm going to look at survival analysis. Survival is about is about can we tell, for example, are dolphins living longer than they used to? And we're going to um, uh, this is challenging because some dolphins are still alive. So we could say, um, so so we we can't particularly say for any dolphin that's still alive. Is it, uh, are those dolphins living, living, um, uh, how long are those dolphins going to live? Instead, we need to use survive, uh, survival analysis. So there's a collection of statistical methods. I am not very good at it, so I'm going to be, be learning alongside you uh, for part of this. Uh, it's been, I use this sometimes, not very often, and um, I definitely could use some practice, unlike, say, biostatisticians who use, who use survival methods all the time. But, uh, but we're going to be trying this out together. What I'm going to be taking a look at is look at our cetacean data set. Okay. And uh, I could have one ask a question like, do male uh, dolphins or female dolphins live longer? And I don't want to be confounded by, for example, perhaps most of the captured dolphins were male, which means they would be older, which uh, captured earlier, which means more likely to have already died. I wouldn't want that to confound the analysis. So this is so survival analysis, a set of statistical methods for, for being able to determine that. Okay. With that in mind, what am I going to do? I'm going to say, I want to fit, I want to actually just select the columns that I care about, which are birth year and origin date no, I want to have the um, status date and the status I certainly care about. Filter not is in a status date. That's most of the data. All right, so we have for these, these are the birth years and the ones that died. Uh, the status date is the last day we know of their um, Health. So if I tried saying filter status equals, is it alive the right category? No, it's living. <laughs> what's the what's that common category? Alive. Oh, the alive ones don't have a status date. Oops. Shouldn't they? They should really have had a um. I thought they would have. Animals still alive, ah, and living in captivity as of May 7th, 2017. Okay, so what I actually need to say is um, I'm interested only in the alive and died ones. The others aren't very, it's not interesting to say what's the age at which they were released. So I'm actually going to say filter for status in alive or died. And then I want to say take the, the, bir the, um, Death year, or I'm going to say actually, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Yeah, I'm actually going to do, do this. I'm going to say death year is, um, I'm going to say if status is alive, then it's 2017. It's not a death year. Let's be clear on that. It's not that they're dead. It's just that's the date they have the data. And then otherwise, it's the year of status date. And let's select birth year, death year, status. Here we go. And now we can say for every dolphin in this data, for the 2,000 dolphins in this data set, this is the, oh, and I should probably say after doing this filter, I should say not is in a death year. We're not missing, the, that's, not un, that's not missing data. Okay. Now how many data, how many dolphins do we have that are alive or dead? We have about three quarters of, of the dolphins in the data set have died. The rest are alive as of 2017. Uh, I might, and while I'm at it, I'm going to throw in a few extra columns. Never hurts to include, does it hurt to include the idea? Uh, ED? Yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit much. Um, I'm going to include the sex. I'm going to include the type, the way it was acquired. And I'm going to include Hmm. Species. 
It's not great because they're mostly bottlenose dolphins, but I could I could throw that into a regression if I wanted. Okay, so dolphin survival. Okay, now I'm gonna remind myself. I think I'm gonna use the serve fit function. So this is yeah, creating a, a survival curve. I want to say what's the survi the the survival curve. Here we are. Uh -huh, yeah. So this shows, for example, here's a um, here's data set where we say here is the time point and the the status of those um, those. Let's see. I quickly reminded myself. What I want to say is uh. Uh huh. I think what I say is the age and whether it's and then if I remind myself what is in serve I've done this before and I'm, but I'm just catching up sorry that I'm not I'm not um, narrating more of this um, Ah, yeah, this is a good example. I, I could take a quick look at the built-in the lung data set that comes with it. It would be like status. Is it one means zero means alive, one means dead. Okay. So I'm actually going to add in. I'm going to say status is if else status equals alive, then one else zero. Nope, one is dead. Zero then one. That's really important to get right. You don't get that right, you're going to be in trouble. Okay. Yeah, zero means alive. All right. All right. Now what I can do, what I would do is fit a serve, uh, I'd say serve fit, fit a survival curve for, I believe I'd say the, ooh, uh, I'd want to say at this point, age equals death year minus birth year. And I'd say fit the age comma the Oh, I see. Interval data. Oh, it actually takes two arguments. My bad. It actually will be birth year, death uh, death year, which could sometimes be 2017, and status explained by one. That is, I'm not going to be regressing it based on anything. I'm just going to be um, uh, fitting a single survival curve based on dolphin survival. Stop time must be greater than start time. Let's see. Oh, I can actually get it. I can get a date, can I? No, I know it's still a, a birth year. Uh, yeah, the problem is it doesn't like the idea that that you can die in the same uh, in in the same year you were born, uh, even though that is important for a survival curve. I'm gonna do something really, really, really goofy, and say death year is death year plus point one. Ugh. Ugh. Where are the cases? Filter uh, death year less than birth year. Ugh. Can't believe this is happening. Why would that happen? Oh, death year greater than birth year. Oops. All right, about time. Oops. All right, so we, so we did a little preparation, and we said, here's our data set. This dolphin... Born, then still alive as of 2017. Born, still alive as of 2017, and so on. And then I fit this curve, uh, this, this, this model. What this shows is, um, oh, God. It's not type equals interval. I forgot to do the type equals. I'm checking this ending time. For right sensor data, this is the follow-up time. Oh, I can actually, I can do it based on age. So I'm actually going to do this a bit differently. I'm going to say age is the minimum. Actually, I'm going to try just saying, ooh, I'm going to try what happens if I don't add 0.1. And I say it's just age and status, and it's not interval. It's right sensor data. Uh, wow, I'm having a, oh, uh, I need to add age to this. Having a fun time. Yeah, all right, that actually is what, that's actually what I wanted to do. Okay, what I did, bef remember I did this before, where I said, what is the distribution of ages? If I took a random sample 
and a random 10 rows. We'd see ones that died in 2003, still alive, died, still alive, and the ages vary from zero, but died in the same year, to, um, to 1634. All right, so I was trying to do. Thanks for taking my patience while I relearn my way around the survival package, uh, including reading doc. I'm sure watching me read documentation was thrilling. This actually shows the lower and upper confidence interval of what it believes to be the median uh, uh, age for dolphin, 16. So that's um that's something we can learn. We've already learned from this data. This is I'm gonna save this as model. It's a survival model. I can t I can do a built-in plot of this model. This is a survival curve. Um, based on what percentage of dolphins do we think will be alive after a particular point? I don't actually love this curve. Not it is. It's done in base R. It's like a built-in plot. But more than that, I can't customize it. I actually usually like to use a tidy version. So what I do is say tidy of model with my with the broom package. I started the broom package. It's now been taken over by Alex Hayes, who's doing a really amazing job. And this is actually showing something different. This is showing, uh, this this turns it into a tidy data frame along with confidence intervals. So I can take this and build a ggplot2 model where it actually says what's the, um, uh, where, where I can actually recreate this graph. I'd say at this time, my estimate of the risk is say, you have a, there's a 91% chance they'll live past the age of zero, they'll live more than a year. And then we'll add geom line. So already this is a survival curve done in ggplot2. On top of that, see I'm more comfortable with data once it's in a tidy form. I can say conf low, conf high, and add a geom ribbon around it. Usually a ribbon you want to be transparent, alpha is 0.2. Um, Oh, why max? There it is. So what this shows is um, is an estimate of the survival curve. It looks like we don't have a sense of how long they live after this point. Um, all right, so some dolphins can live as it looks like can live as long as fifty or fifty-five. So that's a survival curve. What's interesting about this is I can actually um, I'm doing it based just on on, a, on fitting a single survival curve. But give me just one second. Give me just one second. All right. I'm fitting a single survival curve, but I might be interested in fitting it, let's say, based on sex. So I want to say um, based on male or female. Now the model looks a bit different. It actually divides it into these cohorts. And, I can, and similarly, the tidy model when I run it, uh, I said cohorts, I actually meant strata divides into sex, male, female, and unknown. I actually, I know I don't want the unknown data to be included in here. I'm gonna go ahead and say filter strata is not equal to sex is unknown. Uh, and then I'll try the graph while adding additional parameters, saying color is the strata. Now what I get are two survival curves. Notice this works because it divided up, it doubled up the data. It said, what, do I, what does the survival model estimate the, the survival rate to be at this point? So here it actually um, set, shows two survival curves along with their 95% confidence intervals. And it says the, the um, in general it looks like Female dolphins have a slightly higher rate of success than have a slightly higher survival rate than males at most point. It's a little hard to tell whether there's a there's a difference, uh, and it could just be just be due to chance. Um, I'm gonna tidy this up a little bit. Where I'd say scale y continuous labels equals uh, percent format, and I'd add it. Uh, this is called I think this is called a. Is this called a Kaplan-Meier curve? I think that's what it's called. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hope that it is. Um, and uh, I'm not a biostatistician. Percentage of survive of estimated is estimated percentage survival. Okay, how could I tell if sex was actually a meaningful difference? 
I believe for that I'd use a Cox uh, proportional hazards model. So that's where I'd actually say um, uh, this is this is where where I'd be able to actually say do men do male dolphins tend to die earlier? I'm not. I, it's been a while since I used these, but I think maybe if I just plug in the exact same data. Let's see. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. Yes. I can run this and pull out a tidy. What does this What does this mean? This is estimating the the uh, amount that being that in this case would be m versus your baseline of f, the amount that it increases your risk. So it's uh, the confidence interval overlaps. It suggests that it's slightly riskier to be for uh, to be male. I don't remember exactly how to interpret these coefficients. Um, you'd have to. Uh, Take a look at a course for on uh, survival analysis, or um, or look into some uh, do some research on it. But notice that 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 the p value for um, survival based on being on male is uh, the p value is much much um, is, is sorry is above 0.05. I would generally not say no. It's not statistically significant. I wouldn't necessarily say um, male dolphins or female dolphins have different expected lifespans. I notice, however, that. Unknown has a much higher lifespan. I'm going to throw unknown back into the graph. There's a reason I removed it. My concern is that uh, there's a, probably a systematic bias in terms of um, in terms of uh, of dolphins where you don't know the sex. It's more likely that say they died young, uh, that they that they might not have as much data. They might have been tend to be earlier in the um. Uh, and we, we certainly saw most of the missing data was from earlier, from like the 1950s, 19, 1960s, 1970s. Uh, so all these are, are biases that could mean it's not, it certainly doesn't mean that, that, them, that not knowing the sex couldn't have a biological reason, generally with, with dolphins, that, that it wouldn't, um, uh, that it would cause them to die earlier. It's more about uh, how the data is, where the data is missing. That's why I mostly wanted to ignore that. So if anything, I might... I could have filtered it out at this point. Oops, I thought that I filtered it out. I really thought, oh, it's, um, it's, there's no such thing as strata. Oops. Uh, sex is not unknown. There, I moved some of the data. Yeah, now I get just the data in terms of, um, this one we see a, a not significant p-value. All right. One one last thing I could do is I could I could ask it a bit differently. I could say um, I could have fit my model where I said does being born in captivity, so acquisition. There's going to be too many lines here. I think uh, no. There's only there's only four categories. Okay. We still have unknown data. We probably want to get rid of that. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of that. Strata is not equal to acquisition unknown. All right, and what this shows is um, is actually it's very interpretable, and that's why it's good to take a look at a survival curve is that this is showing that dolphins born in captivity, it's almost as if they're, like, they're, they're um, likely to die in their first few years. Now, we know that's not actually, that's not actually meaningful. Uh, it's, that, it's that we typically wouldn't capture a dolphin that's, that, and estimate its age to be zero or, or, or one. Uh, it's likely most dolphins are captured when they're older. So the um, whereas for, whereas when they're born, we have the opportunity to observe them dying even very early in their lifespan. So th this is the kinds of, of problems that people deal with when they're trying to do survival analysis is figuring out where where could the missing data be causing problems. Uh, this is probably why miscarriages uh, and stillbirths were included in the data separately. Is there probably another important piece of this puzzle if we want? Wanted to model um, uh, to model dolphin health. Finally, we can see rescue. Dolphins are rescued. They have a wide confidence interval because we have much less data. They're rescued at various points, but it's but the rate of survival is fairly low. They might have there might be consistent health issues um, that that they're dealing with. Um, that's where, but it's certainly uh, it's, it's worth observing. But yeah, this I, I'd say the um, 
The born in captivity, this curve is probably the most meaningful. If what we wanted to ask was, um, was how long would you expect a dolphin in captivity to last? This one is very biased based on when a dolphin is captured. All the dolphins in this data set started at some age. Presumably their age and their, therefore their birth year were estimated by marine biologists. And um, that's why it, it looks as if dolphins never die in the, uh, in the first, almost never die in the first year or so. This might be the more realistic uh, graph. And if we wanted, we could have taken, we could take just the born and look by, look, does sea, is, is sea world have a worse rate of survival than other um, uh, parks and, and so on? Um, we, we, we could keep examining that. We're out of time for today. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to conclude here and, uh, and just observe, what have, what have we done? We've, um, outside of the typical exploratory data analysis that we do in a lot of these sessions, we've taken a look at fuzzy join for getting, um, for finding categories. That was up here where we said, take um, a couple of different regular expressions, turn them into categories. And we've had, we've taken, here it is, uh, and We've done a little survival analysis, tidy survival analysis, uh, in terms of trying to estimate uh, the typical lifespans of dolphins. So we got the we got it um, by sex. We did we got it by acquisition, and we did a um, and we did a Cox proportional hazard model to bring a bit of um, of statistical testing into it. Again, if you're interested in these topics, they're all worth a lot more research, and I really encourage you to take a look. All right, that was today's Tidy Tuesday screencast. Uh, I had a great time, hope you did too, and I'll see you next week.